We witness a wild joey ready to make. Ooh. This is Indomie. Okay, what am I doing again? Right. How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to the show called Joey Answers Your Questions, the show. It's the late night episode right now. The very first one. I know, I know. You can stop the applause. We got to get on with the show. How can you hear me over the applause? We got to just get in the zone. Auto zone. We're answering some very important questions today. I don't know the content, actually. I don't know what the questions are, but I know they're important because they're coming from you guys. Actually, you know what? You know what? You know what might be fun is if we check the subreddit. I'm gonna I'm gonna incognito this because they've been tracking me my whole life. They already had CD ROMs, computers, everything, but they had a nuclear reactor underneath the building. And what's supposed to Why the algorithm is ruining your life? Okay, so people are doing notes. This is the this is an abandoned subreddit. 100%. I don't know what to expect when I go here. Uh, I have checked a few times. I've cheated. Um, and it's dead. I killed it. It was worse than dead. So maybe the subreddit might actually have a resurgence, but we'll see. But I might as well just take a gander. Take a gander. Take a stroll down the, the alleyways of this ghost town and see what's going on. Okay, so we got why the algorithm is ruining your life notes posted by gnomes24, and that's really cool. Good, that's that's a big, okay, actually I'm not signed in, but big, big pee pee, big, uh, big, big thumbs up. That's high quality, you're bringing quality to this community. Nice work, gnomes24. I was given a gift. I specifically told them about this book. As of chapter three, things are great, Atomic Habits. Great book, yes. This was from Joe Madzma, and uh, Atom Atomic Habits is a must read. The Mindset That's Changing My Life Notes by Gnomes24. Man, you're just on top of it. You're probably a A-plus student, aren't you? Just an absolute keener neener. All your T's are crossed and your I's are dotted. All your ducks are in a row. Cross the T's and dot the lowercase J's. Mindset's Changing My Life. Yeah, look at this. Internal Locus of Control 2020, yeah. Boom. You know, I'm really glad that somebody's getting so much out of my videos that they are actually writing notes. And I think that's honestly really, really cool. Don't take what I'm saying without a grain of salt. Don't take what I'm saying as gospel ever. Always evaluate what I'm saying and try to bullshit test it a little bit. Apply it if it makes sense for your life and leave it if it doesn't. Once again, you guys know the saying, I'm not a doctor. I'm, I'm just, just a, a dude. dude. Yeah, hopefully that comes across in my videos. But I am, at the same time, flattered and glad and humbled at the fact that you guys are taking notes. That's awesome. <laughs> what? <laughs> Username Joey is an egg says, Scientists are still fighting over this. Who is first? The chicken or the egg? That's pretty funny. You know, you could probably do a better job cleaning up the edges there. So that's uh, minus five points for some really amateur edge work. Unreal. Unreal. What else? But hey, you know what? I laughed. Jomadzma's here. How are you, Pepe? And there's a little sub community going on, and I actually do want to revive the subreddit. I added the banner here. I added the logo. I think it's looking a little bit sharp. And five of you are online. There's one 1.1 k members. I think we can actually get some more members up in this bitch. Do you kiss your mother with that mouth? 89 notes on Atomic Habits. Review on the end. Cool, cool, cool. This is awesome. Why are all the most overpowered characters bald? Hell yeah, Mr. Clean, me guy, X-Men guy. We've got Shrek, God of War guy. We've got Avatar. Sorry, I don't know if it's if his actual name is Avatar. I, I haven't watched the show, but most importantly, we have King Neptune without his crown, and he is bald. But he's also very powerful. So, perhaps the most powerful guy in all of this is Mr. Clean. You know, I feel like people underestimate him as a superpower, as a superhero. He's got a lot of tricks up his sleeve. Oh, that's great. And I feel like if the Avengers needed a an eighth guy, a ninth guy, a fifteenth guy, I don't know how many Avengers there are, but Mr. Clean is probably the runner up. No! Baldness is a superpower. I mean, that's what my teacher told me or words of affirmation. Touch and words of affirmation, that's my happy place. Me, with English as a second language, wondering why he likes it so much when people say things like do, have, or will, is a Canadian thing, I guess. 
words of affirmation. Maybe with the English, do have our will. Is that what a word of affirmation is? Do have our will? That's in words of affirmation come in the context of five love languages, so this mistake is totally fair. It's not common at all outside of this context. Ah. Oh. Cool. I don't know. Look at you getting better and shit and looking good and doing it, by the way. Life is tough, but so are you. Okay, this is a cross post from Wholesome Memes, but uh, appreciate the sentiment. <laughs> I've seen this one. Corporate needs to find, needs you to find the difference between this picture and this picture. They're the same picture, and it's Thomas Frank. This is good shit. This is why the subreddit was born. We need more of this shit in here. Gotta stop saying shit, my mom watched this stuff. Make it an old lady fate with your sailor talk! Now remember, caffeine bad. Chugs down a fourth jar of coffee for the day. You know, it is really underrated. I think coffee tastes better. Iced coffee tastes better when drinking from a from a jar. Drinking? I don't know. I gotta, gotta stop second guessing myself. English is my first language. Whatever I say is gospel, right? That's what I said earlier in the video, right? So this is when Joey tells me my life is ruining my life. Woo! Yeah, baby! That's what I've been waiting for. That's what it's all about. Woo! <laughs> I love that. Wait, this subreddit is dead? Always has been. Always has been. So yeah, it is dead. What can I say? I killed the subreddit, but hey, I'm not gonna look in detail, but I'll, I'll open the page. I'll like really quickly peek to see if there's any new activity and then I will know that it's probably high time I make one of these reaction videos to the subreddit. You know, whatever whatever you want to use a subreddit for, it's there for you. If you want to talk about, you know, some of the videos, if you want to talk about some of the ideas from the videos, if you want to post memes, which is probably the most constructive use of the subreddit. There we go. I did it. Aurelio Coeto says we are reaching levels on the titles slash thumbnails never reached before. Ruining your life is ruining your life. This is untreaded territory, but it needed to happen. Adam's Apple says, dude, I hope you make a video addressing the addiction to ruining your life because it's ruining my life. Good, uh, good call. Parth Perrick says, you should watch Cody Code's recent second channel video. He complimented you. I saw that. It was really funny. Like I was, I was quite surprised. The only reason why I found out is because on my most recent upload on better ideas, people were saying, bruh, you did my boy Cody dirty. And I'm like, uh-oh, what happened? And there was like 10 comments being like, bro, don't insult Cody Co. I'm like, uh, okay, I need to check his second channel because he was probably on it. And sure enough, yeah, he took offense to me, you know, saying that his videos were a waste of time, although I really didn't mean it because I do watch his videos all the time. Uh, big fan of Cody Co. And yeah, that was just unfortunate B-roll placement by me. And I, I will never make that mistake again. What can I say? I will never make the mistake of insulting the demigod who is Cody Ko. He might have a cameo in the next uh, main channel video for a little bit. That may or may not happen. We'll see. It depends if he gets back to me. I slid into his DMs. And I said, hey, send me some clips of you being productive. And he said, sure. Danny Hatcher says, what's in your digital toolbox? What apps, extensions, and tools do you use to get things done and track what you're doing? Tasks, projects, knowledge, etc. Any uncommon nerdy things in there? Text expander? Not text expander, but thank you for your question, Danny. There's a couple things. I'm a simple guy. I use Notion like every other productivity YouTuber on the planet, but it truly is a very versatile program, platform, tool, a digital tool. I write all my scripts on there. I kind of organize my shot lists on there, blah, 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 blah. I use Habitify as a habit tracker. I've used pretty much every habit tracker under the sun. I'm a sucker for those things. I'm liking Habitify right now. It's a very simple layout. Like digital toolbox, I, I have the apps. I use the Adobe Creative Cloud for everything. I also use Audacity, even though I should be using Audition, but I do a specific thing with audio mixing, which I covered in the last video, and I like doing that on in Audacity. And yeah, what, what is in my digital toolbox? My Fitness Pal, Slack, Audible, um, the Chess app. Yeah, I feel like I use Notion for everything, and I use Habitify to track my habits, and then everything else is sort of uh, specific, you know, like, video editing, Premiere, I do Photoshop, Lightroom, all that kind of stuff. So that's pretty much it, I keep it simple. Oh, Google Calendar. I use Google Calendar to organize my life. Nicholas Sandberg says, hey Joey, what advice would you give to someone who keeps falling into the same self-destructive cycles, who tell themselves they will change and do it for a couple of days, but then fall back into the same bad cycles? Why is permanent change so difficult? Um, what do you think experiencing long-lasting change looks like? Yeah, that's that's 
kind of the question of a lot of people's life. It's a very deep question. It's not easy to answer, to be honest. One thing that's become clear to me, I don't know if you guys know the YouTube channel Universal Man. He's sort of more directed at men's lifestyle and stuff like that. But something that I picked up from him was just the importance of self-talk. And so that's Mark Quepit, by the way. Uh, self-talk is extremely useful as a tool because sometimes you have sort of this split mind problem where there's a more impulsive side of you, the side of you that wants to engage in these suboptimal habits. There's the more you know rational side of your brain, arguably the more authentic side of your brain that knows what you want long term. It knows it's more aware of your morality. It's more aware of your higher goals you know, your ideals. It knows the kind of life that you would ideally want to be living. I think Jordan Peterson talks about this too. A lot of people talk about this whole uh, split mind, you know, your more uh, moralistic ideal side of your brain and the more primal monkey brain. They're kind of always in this little battle. You know, if you're too iron fisted with the moral side of your brain, the more logical side of your brain, and you're you know, you disregard your emotions and you try to be as strict as possible, then eventually the emotional side of your brain will get really pissed off and the tension will build and build and build until it will become so uh, turbulent or I guess so pent up that it will just lash out and ignore everything that your rational side of your brain wants it to do. So in order to bridge the gap and rather than yo-yoing between being super productive and super uh, slothful and self-destructive all the time, you really need to engage in a dialogue with yourself, engage in a dialogue with the more emotional side of yourself daily and, and really uh, check in with it and be like, <laughs> you don't really have to be like, hey dude, how's it going? Because it's you, but you almost have to just be aware of what you're feeling. If you're feeling stressed or if you're feeling tired or if you're feeling angry or lonely, just try to tap into what you're feeling. And by checking in, use the rational side of your brain to offer a solution that will actually solve the problem that needs to be addressed rather than escaping from the problem with whatever your escapist activity of choice is. Yeah, you really just have to be more aware and bring that awareness into your day-to-day -day life and lock it down as a habit. You know, maybe that's once a day, maybe that's twice a day, maybe it's when you're in the shower, but try to engage in, in the dialogue with yourself because yeah, you, you do have two sides of your brain. They, they want two different things, but they don't have to want two different things. You can, you can negotiate with yourself. Hopefully that helps you, you know, check in with yourself. Tora Plays Guitar says, God, I love the editing. It makes me laugh so much. I'm sorry it's not a question, just that. Fair enough, you know, Demetrios a legend. Demetrios is a legend. Demetrio is a legend. Once again, I struggle with English on a daily basis. Joey better be paying his editor. Yeah, let's not talk about that. Let's not talk about that at all. Um, you know, I pay him in McDonald's coupons. Hopefully that's enough. It's obviously a joke. He generously pays me in Taco Bell coupons. All right, he doesn't need to get paid. Daniel Pike says, any tips for other filmmakers slash writers Living and trying to make a living in Canada. Network. It's the it's the worst word of all time if you're <laughs> wanting to make it. But you really do have to just say yes to everything. Take shitty jobs that you don't want to take. Unflattering jobs. Mingle with people on set. Compliment them. You do have to be a little bit sleazy, but at the same time, it doesn't have to be disingen disingenuous non-genuine. You don't have to like fake being kind, but that's a deeper argument. Let me, let me go on a little rabbit trail here. Ever since I read the book, uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie way back in the day, I've had this philosophy that being kind to somebody or friendly to somebody or complimenting them, even if you don't mean it, is still a net positive for everyone involved. It's not inauthentic. I mean, it might be inauthentic, but it's not a negative, in my opinion. Like if you go to a party and there's somebody who is moping around and you happen to be an outgoing guy, why would it be a bad thing if you really try hard to look for something good about that person or even if you can't, make something up to compliment them? It might completely lighten up their day. It might spark 
some joy into their life and they all of a sudden become more comfortable in that party you know i don't see i don't see why it, it would be a bad thing to like make it a habit of calling people by their name um complimenting them it makes the world a better place. You don't have to mean it. It's better if you mean it. By being habitual about it, you can start recognizing the good in people so that it does eventually become genuine. Anyways, all this to say is you should mingle and you should be friendly and you should network and you should do favors for people. Don't be like an absolute pushover, but yeah, honestly, networking as an artist is the most important thing ever. It's how I got all of my freelance video jobs before I transitioned into YouTube. Yeah, you just have to be friendly. You have to be chill. You gotta be somebody that everybody wants to have on set. People, someone who like lightens the mood and cracks jokes and stuff like that, but is still hardworking, busting their ass. You have to, you have to conform to being the ideal crew member. And as for writing, I don't have as much experience, but I'm sure it's a very similar situation. You gotta just meet tons of people. Become better. The Chili Mango Arts says, Hey Joey, can you make a video on how to deal with insecurities, doubts, and fears? Great content. I can't do all of those. I can do insecurities and doubts, but not fears. I'm too scared to do that. Like, you, do you mean a main channel video or a second channel video, or do you mean any kind of video? Because I can address some of these right now. I don't wanna dive into a lot of it because it is late at night and once again, I'm coming to the second channel video with suboptimal brain capacity, brain energy, and brain. His brain is gone. I'm a big fan of confidence stemming from competence. I feel like a lot of people, when they have a lot of insecurities and they have a lot of doubts about themselves, they will listen to advice saying you should be affirming yourself and telling yourself you're really good and watching your self-talk. And while I do think self-talk is very important, as I've previously mentioned, you should be very aware of how you talk to yourself when you fail and how you treat yourself when you succeed. You know, do you congratulate yourself when you succeed? And do you berate yourself? <coughs> I have a little noodle in my throat. Do you berate yourself when you fail? That's important. Try to get that in check first. But equally as important, is to actually practically work on your insecurities. Are there things about the things that you're insecure about that you can improve on a practical basis? And are there little steps you can take towards improving those things? Are you insecure about your slap shot in hockey? You can work on it. Baby, Baby steps. steps, you know? 10 shots a day, then 20 shots a day, then 30 shots a day. That's a bad example, because who's insecure about their slap shot? That's a little weird. If you're insecure about your face and you think you're ugly. I'm ugly. It's hard to work on your face, but you can go out and socialize and be friendly with people. And through the exposure of happy, smiling faces all around you, you will start to realize that no one thinks you're ugly, <laughs> you know, you're a person. This positive feedback that you're getting from all around you and this continued exposure to that positive feedback will confirm through repetition uh, that you're not ugly. We're not ugly, we just stink. And boom, your insecurity starts to go away gradually. So watch yourself talk and then take some steps towards rewriting the narrative that you have in your head by exposure and by taking action and taking repeated action over a long period of time. Sam Juan Yuno says, grinds my gears when people say all of the sudden, rather than the correct way, all of a sudden, this face. Well, great content as usual, <laughs> lol. I totally agree. All of the sudden, all of the sudden, I'm gonna move on to a different comment. Like Minimus16 saying, just wondering, would you rather have it? to say yes to everything bad someone tells you or have to say no to anything good someone offers you to do. If you do happen to read this, I'm a photographer too. I recently started posting it on Instagram. It's Minimus Photography, all the best, Vincent. That's dope, Vincent. Photography is a great hobby to take up. Taking photos is great. I would, I would have to say that say, say no to anything good someone offers to you. I mean, you're kind of in charge of your own fate anyways. So you should be producing the own, your own good outcomes in life. But you shouldn't have to rely on it. It's great and you should take them up, take up good opportunities, take on good opportunities uh, when they do come up. But it's not, you can forge a life path by yourself pretty much. Actually, is that true? No, because in a job interview, 
you might be like super qualified. <laughs> yeah, that, that would suck. You'd be like super qualified for the job. You interview really, really well. As soon as the person's like, that, that's great, you're hired. You'd have to be like, nah, no, nah, I'm good. <laughs> yeah, that would suck. Like what kind of bad things are people gonna be offering to you that you have to say yes to? You know, people don't really offer you bad things on a regular basis. You know, usually people are pretty nice. So I think I would have to do everything bad someone tells you. I would just have to avoid going to like raves and shit where they have drugs, um, like tons, tons of drugs. I don't really wanna, I don't want, I don't want drugs. Luke Berard says, hey Joey, rank these three in order of importance for you. Diet, sleep, and exercise. My list would be ordered sleep, exercise, and then diet. Hope you're doing well. I would say sleep is the most important by far because you literally die. You cease to exist if you don't sleep. Yes, that is true. Yes, I don't know. You understand. Everyone gets it. You don't sleep, you die. Oh my God! I would say diet before exercise, to be honest, because, ooh. Oh my God! Now that is tough. That is tough. I would rather have 10 out of 10 sleep, 10 out of 10 exercise with a five out of 10 diet than 10 out of 10 sleep, 10 out of 10 diet, and five out of 10 exercise. I'd rather be more active with like an average diet. But then I wouldn't live very long, I don't think. I'd wear myself out. Maybe diet is more important. I don't know the answer to this question. It's a great question. Since I can't answer it very easily, it's an excellent question. You've stumped me. I would say they're all important. Do them all. Sai Christian, Christian EP says, and make a video about dealing with and, and, Make a video about dealing with being obsessive about your other's appearance. It would be great since your audience is full of full of people obsessive about your baldness. My audience is full of people obsessive about my baldness. So you want me to make a video addressing people's obsession with people's appearance like, like mine and the fact that I'm bald. Yeah, and honestly, not the worst video topic. Now that I think about it, now that I've sort of removed it from my own bald context, it could be applied to other uh, topics, like people being obsessed with celeb, like Chris Hemsworth on Instagram. He's got a rockin' body. He's 10 out of 10 alpha Chad. I can't look like that. So I shouldn't obsess about looking like that because I'm just not as genetically gifted. But at the same time, I don't know if it's bad to compare your, to not compare yourself with others at least a little bit. Otherwise you're living in your own little echo chamber. I feel like we need people, a select few amount of people, like a small circle of people to compare yourself to and, um, you know, people who are worse than you and better than you to give you context of where you stand. I do think community is important and comparison is important, but you wanna be able, you wanna compare yourself to the right people. So I don't know if that answers your question, but I, I pulled something out of that question. Katrina says, well, I guess it's Katrina. Do people compliment your sense of humor quite a lot, IRL? This face, and then hashtag sure they do. No, no one compliments my sense of humor. Some people laugh at me sometimes, not all the time. Sometimes I say stuff, and then I'm shocked at what I just said, and then no one laughs. This guy stinks! And it was funny in my head. Wasn't funny when I said it out loud. No, I'm not that funny in real life, I don't think. And I never will be. And I never will be. How long have we been recording? Guillerme de Agrela Lopez says, Hey Joey. Love your videos. You know that feeling when you reach the end of the day and there's no mental energy left to answer your friend's messages or talk to someone else? What would you do if that occurred very often? How can one get rid of this lack of energy? Don't beat yourself up if you don't have energy at the end of the day. It's kind of the point of it being the end of the day. You're supposed to be winding down and, you know, getting in that sleep mode on the train to the sleepy Betty by land. Maybe don't answer friends past a certain time. No, nah, I don't really feel like it. You know, maybe, maybe you're a little bit sleep deprived. Maybe you need to block off a little bit of extra time to get those sweet Z's. Yeah, I don't know. Get back to me if it's, if it's a problem earlier in the day, because that's a separate issue. Maybe refer to my why you're always tired video. Um, but again, that's not gospel. <laughs> 
gospel. I almost choked on the noodle again. I want to eat this Indomie, but I feel like it's disgusting if I eat it on camera because all you hear is the smacking. But now it's lukewarm and it's all sticky and it's supposed to be slimy, not sticky. It's supposed to be a beautiful slimy meal time. This is my time. So it's midnight right now, basically, and I'm kind of loopy and I should be in bed, but stuff came up. I did procrastinate a little bit. I'm not a saint. Yeah, it was honestly a chaotic day, but I'm getting around to it because I want to keep these coming every Friday. It's important. It's very important. Consistency is important. Let me talk about consistency. I'm not going to talk about it for very long, but bear with me. I think the biggest complaint that we get nowadays with the pandemic is that there's no consistency. There's no structure. People are starting to realize that they like to have to be somewhere, if that makes sense. At least that's the case for me. When society was sort of normal, I had to be a lot of places. I had to be at appointments. I had to be at meetings. I had this book club I went to. Nerd! I had hockey twice a week. I went to the gym. I still go to the gym now, but you know, there were all these little things that were a part of my life that were outside of my house. But now I have to create my own structure. So much of the pandemic, it was like Groundhog Day. You kind of woke up. I didn't know what day it was half the time. I didn't know what time it was when I woke up. Simultaneously, the longest and shortest year of my entire life. Stuff like this. Having episode of Joey Answers Your Questions, the show every Friday. You know, it's good for me. You know, it's good for you. Maybe. That's questionable. But I feel like this kind of structure, adding some structure in your life, having people accountable. I have to send this off to my editor every Monday. I kind of failed that today. But things like this, it feels good to have to be somewhere. It means you have responsibility. And being responsible for things kind of subconsciously tells you that you have an identity and you're useful in the world and you have a purpose. So if you're kind of feeling aimless during this pandemic, I would say invite some responsibility into your life. Invite some structure. Add places that you have to be at certain times and hold yourself accountable to it. Maybe get someone else to hold you accountable to it. But it feels good to have to be somewhere. That's the end of my rant. And that's the end of the show called Joey Answers Your Questions, the show. I felt kind of loopy today, but I feel like it added a little bit of spice. Hey, I'm gonna add some spice though. Some, uh, I don't know. I. That's it, see ya. Oh yeah, sorry, uh, like if you want more questions answered, post your questions to the comment section of this video because the questions that I answered today are the questions that you posted in last week's video. So for next week's video, you guys know how this works. See ya in the next episode. Boyos and girls, girlos, see ya.